My beloved brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful day of Eid. This day of Eid goes back to the Sunnah of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And we celebrate it because it was the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to inform us about what happened to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and to celebrate it as a result. Had it not been for the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ask us to celebrate this day, we would not have celebrated it. And this goes to show that everything we celebrate as Muslimin, as an act of worship, is connected to the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also know that the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam appears in the scriptures of the Jews as well as the Christians. But we also know that the most accurate narration of this particular story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam happens to be in the Quran and in the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we find, for example, details that are against what the Quran has come with or against what the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, we will actually discount those details because they are against what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For example, the issue of who the person was who was sacrificed according to us and according to the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam. And according to the previous scriptures, it was the Prophet Ishaq alayhi salatu wa salam. We believe that there was tampering that occurred with the previous scriptures in a way that they changed it such that they said it is Ishaq or Isaac, may peace be upon him solely because they felt that if they said it was Ismail alayhi salatu was salam, then it would not be any merit for them because Jesus and Moses or Isa alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salatu was salam were connected to Ishaq alayhi salam and not to Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. So we believe it was changed. We believe the scripture and the correct narration is what appears in the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Historically also it is proven because Ismail alayhi salatu was salam was given birth to after a long time and he was the son who was alive at the time. So to say it was Ishaq when he wasn't even born is something that is definitely rejected. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us understand the accuracy of the narrations in the Quran and the fact that there can never ever be a contradiction or a mistake in the revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent. So one might ask, what is the big deal regarding the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam? I've been asked the question as well that why Ibrahim alayhi salam? Why not Adam alayhi salam? He was the first. Why not Nuh alayhi salatu was salam? The reality is, yes, these were all messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were indeed powerful people. They were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They brought a similar message. In fact, when it came to worship, they brought the exact message in that all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called towards worshiping one Allah, worship your maker, your maker alone. Do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the messengers brought exactly the same message when it came to worship, when it came to belief, they all taught their people to believe in the angels to believe in the fact that there have been scriptures sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those that had been revealed before the particular messenger and those that were to come afterwards. They all gave glad tidings of another messenger who was to come after them and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in that regard, they all brought exactly the same message. What was different? how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to be worshipped. He chose that at the time of every prophet, there would be differences in how I will be worshipped. Although I will be worshipped alone. For example, the salah that we just fulfilled now, Salatul Fajr, 
mashallah, how we read it was as per the instruction of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The salah of the Christians is different when Jesus or Isa alayhi salatu was salam was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He taught them a different way of prayer, but it was also known as salah or a prayer. Similarly, when it comes to Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, the exact method of prayer would not be the same as what we have today. You and I would know that the Qibla we face was an instruction to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he arrived in Medina Munawwara. Subhanallah. So before that, they used to face Baytul Maqdis. They used to face Jerusalem. And who knows, perhaps before that, they may have even faced somewhere else if it was the instruction of Allah. And perhaps maybe it was not related to us, but it was not connected to us. And if it was not given to us as information, we do not need to know. All we know is whatever the instruction of Allah was, they followed it. So are we following the instruction of Allah for us and to us? May Allah make it easy for us to understand these instructions. And this is where we take a look at the life of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, the speciality of it. As a young boy, he started questioning. He was questioning his father. He was questioning his family members. He was questioning his community members. This was loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask questions. Why are you doing this? Why is this happening? How come you are carving idols and people are worshipping these idols? They are literally believing that these things can bring us goodness and, and they can uh, alleviate the suffering we are going through, perhaps ward off the evil or the sadness. And these are just stones and pieces of wood that have been carved. So they told him, stop asking questions. I'm sure you and I know when a little child asks too many questions, we tell them, keep quiet. Stop asking too many questions. The reality is my brothers and sisters, let's learn a lesson. Children are inquisitive. If you do not answer your child, they will get the wrong answer from somewhere else. And by that time you might regret it will be too late. So when a child asks a question, answer it in an appropriate manner. Sometimes you need to answer it like an adult. They are waiting for an answer that is convincing in the sense that you might want to word it in a manner that they understand it according to their age. But the answer will never be and should never be a lie. Don't lie to your children. Don't tell them something just to get them off your back. No, if you don't know it, tell them, I'll tell you next week. We will sit and talk about this thing here next week. And it gives you one whole week to go and prepare the answer. Go and ask, go and find out. The problem with us, sometimes we are guilty of not knowing something. And as a result, we just tell our children that, you know what? Don't ask. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. For example, today on the globe, so many things are happening. There is a lot of chaos and confusion. Sometimes we don't know the Islamic rulings regarding certain things. When the children come to ask us and we don't have an answer, perhaps they will continue asking others. They didn't get it from you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May he make us from those who realize the importance of responding to the children. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam began to ask his father. The answer was not satisfactory. They shut him up literally. They kept him quiet and they told him, listen, stop asking. You follow as he said, why should I do this? How can I ask an idol that does not is, meaning this idol is unable to ward off a fly that sits on it. And you want me to say, oh, idol, give me goodness. Give me this. Give me that. And I see flies sitting. I see things happening. The idol cannot help itself, let alone others. The idol cannot ward off evil from itself. How will it ward off evil from myself and all the other people? So they warned him. They said, hey, you be careful. We will punish you if you begin to continue in this way or if you continue in this way. And what happened is, as a result, he hatched a plan. He decided, you know what, I cannot allow this thing to happen. And I want to fix them up, fix them up in the sense that I want to make them think they don't want to talk to me. Let's engage in a different type of a discussion. What is the discussion? They are saying these idols give goodness. These idols come forth with so much of control. They have a lot of control of what happens around us. So let me break up all these idols and prove to them the idols didn't do anything. So there was a day, a day of celebration that they all had gone out and he told them I'm sick. Sick here, not meaning physically ill, but he was sick and tired of what they were doing. He was fed up basically of what they were doing. 
So it's not a lie in the sense that he was sick of what they were doing, but physically he was well, he was healthy. Mentally, he was extremely healthy. Nabi of Allah, chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this was in his young days. And then he decided to stay back. And when they all went away, he destroyed all of the idols besides the big one. Intentionally, he kept it and he hung the axe on the neck of the big one. And as they came back and they were shocked, what happened to these idols? They had a system whereby the wealthy would afford bigger idols. So what would happen is when you have a big problem, you need to go to a rich man to say, can I borrow your idol? <laughs> this is how they were thinking. Imagine how the mind was. So if you have a small problem, the daily issues, the small little uh, idol you might have with you here and there, and you, you know, they would call out to it. But when you have a major problem, I need to have something big. And if it was a huge issue, they would go to those that were semi immobile, so to speak, not able to move them with, unless with extreme difficulty. So he destroyed all of them and he kept this big one. They came back and they asked the question, what happened? And someone said, oh, we heard that there was a young man, this young man, Ibrahim, he was talking about this. So it must be him. When they went to question him, guess what happened? For the first time, they had a decent discussion. Now they had to talk to him because he thought of a plan. Now they came to him. What happened here, oh Ibrahim? Initially, they didn't want to talk to him. He said, what do you mean what happened here? Go and ask that big one. If he speaks, see how he added it on. He says, go and ask the big one. Then he says, if he speaks, which means if there is no speech coming from him, then you should know that all this is just a waste. They felt so insulted because they knew within themselves that where are we going to talk to these idols? So the point was made. He won completely. But guess what? Nobody accepted. Everyone was so fearful of society, of what the forefathers used to do. Everyone was so scared of the norms in the community. They said, whether this is right or wrong, we are not going to ask. We will continue doing whatever has been done all along. He was the only man, the only man. And later on, after some time, he was granted nubuwa by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was given prophethood. When he was given prophethood, Sarah, his wife, accepted the message. And Lut, alayhi salatu was salam, at the time a young boy, the nephew of Ibrahim, alayhi salam, he accepted the message. The narrations make mention of just the two of them. Two people. Imagine the Nabi of Allah, no following, just two people. And that's it. And he was one of the greatest of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much so that narrations make mention of the fact that after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the greatest of anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. So at that particular juncture, they decided to punish him, penalize him in several different ways. They decided to cast him into the fire. And as you know, the fire became cold by the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? That's a question. You want miracles in your life? I want miracles in my life. Something needs to happen. I need to develop a link with Allah that is strong. When when I've recognized Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I need to understand he will instruct me to do things that sometimes will not make sense to me. But for as long as I know, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who instructed me. And the source of this instruction is my maker himself. I must never question. I must surrender. This is the meaning of the term Islam. This is why when you hear several of the messengers, they say, المسلمين, I'm the first to submit. المؤمنين, I'm the first to believe, which means if there is anything coming in this direction here, I am. I'm the first one to submit, subhanallah. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he submitted to Allah. He recognized Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know there are verses in the Quran where mention is made of him having looked at the stars and asking a question, having looked at the moon and asking a question, having looked at the sun and asking a question. What was the question? The question was, could this be Lord? The answer is no. So some of the ahadith make mention of a very interesting point that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam never ever worshipped the stars, nor did he consider worshipping them from the beginning. He didn't worship them. He did not consider worshipping them. If you read the verse, it seems like he considered to worship them because he's asking the question. This is the star or these are the stars and 
perhaps they could be God. And then he says, no, they disappeared. My God does not disappear. The truth is that incident happened in a place known as Harran. In Harran, there were people who were also worshipping the stars and worshipping deities besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he raised the question, not because he was considering it, but for the same reason that he raised the questions with the idols to say that, could this be God? And then when it disappeared, he said, look, it can't be because it disappeared. That was just a way of talking to them, a way of communicating to them. So sometimes people feel that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was considering this. He was considering that. The truth is his status is higher than that. He did not consider worshipping the sun. He did not consider worshipping the moon, but he raised the question so that the people could hear the answer. So that what they were doing would actually be nullified from proven points. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. So once he recognized Allah, you know, at the end of that discussion in Harran, the Quran says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam said, وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ I have turned my face to the one who created the skies or the, the, the skies and the earth. And I have turned my face to him alone in a clean cut way. I will worship him alone and I will not associate partners with him. This was the conclusion. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to test him in a bigger way. What was the bigger way? The bigger way is, oh Ibrahim, we are instructing you to sacrifice your son Ismail alayhi salatu wassalam. And he was given to Ibrahim alayhi salam after a period of time. Guess what happened? Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam, he knew the source of the instruction. So he did not ask a single question. Immediately, this instruction came through a dream. He spoke to his son. And his son was given such a brilliant upbringing, so brilliant. The relationship was so strong that when Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam told his son that, you know, I had a dream. Now his son knows that this dream cannot be just an, an ordinary dream because this man is a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dream was that I was sacrificing you for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what do you think? You know, the term used in the Quran, Inni ara fil manami anni adbahuka fanzur madha tara. I have seen in my dream that I am sacrificing you. So look into it. What is your opinion? Fanzur madha tara. Look into it. What do you see? What is your view? He says, Ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar. Oh my father, do as you are instructed. He understood a dream is an instruction. And also he said, my father, if it's coming from Allah, that's it. Satajiduni insha'allahu minas sabirin. You will indeed find me from among those who are patient. I will take it. If it's from Allah, we take it. Let it happen. So you and I know how the how it ended subhanallah where the two of them went shaitan tried to deceive them tried to distract them they kept on uh, pelting the devil and continuing until they ended in a position whereby this body of the child was replaced by a ram from jannah and this is the sunnah we are following and as a result allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam so many gifts. A result of what? A result of continuously following the instruction of Allah, whether he understood it or not. It is clear for everyone that you will never as a human being understand the wisdom behind a question to you or an instruction to you to sacrifice your own son. You and I would refuse obviously completely and immediately because this instruction for you and I, we are not prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there is an incident of a man. Uh, in fact, Ismail alayhi salatu was salam at one stage when he was in Mecca al Mukarramah, he was married and his father Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam visited the home in his absence. So 
there happened to be a discussion between the daughter-in-law and the father-in-law and the father-in-law was not satisfied. So he asked his son to divorce this wife of his, but in a way that the instruction was given to the woman herself that when my son comes back, let him know that, you know, the doorstep is not right. He needs to get rid of it, which means, you know, your the person who welcomes us at the door is not right. So he got rid of his wife. And the next time he came, according to the narration, he said, keep her. So he kept her. Now, the, the difficulty is, and the point I'm raising is today, people sometimes out of their weakness of understanding say, I am the father and I instruct you to divorce this wife of yours. So some people come and ask a question to say, look, is that the status of a father? Look at what happened to Ibrahim alayhi salam. That's the evidence they use that he instructed the son and the son obliged. So I'm instructing you, you must oblige. So we say you are not Ibrahim and he is not Ismail. You are not a prophet of Allah and he is not the son of a prophet. If you were a prophet, indeed, it was going to be an instruction he was going to have to take from you. So don't come about saying that because I am a father and Ibrahim alayhi salam was a father. My instruction is complete according to us. And according to what we've been taught by Muhammad sallallahu when you are instructed and instruction by your own parents, you need to ask yourself firstly, is this correct or is it wrong? If it is wrong in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you throw it out of the window, no matter who instructed you. And if it is correct, you will acknowledge it, you will accept it, you will adopt it because it, for, it, it comes within what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed. So similarly, we cannot say that when we have seen a dream to do something of this nature, that it's an instruction for us. It's not an instruction for you. That's the point I'm raising. It is not an instruction for you. It was only in an instruction for the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For you and I, we have other instructions that are far more simple. I ask you a question, my brothers and sisters, which is a more difficult instruction? One to sacrifice a son or one to get up for Salatul Fajr? Subhanallah, there is no comparison. Salatul Fajr is minor. It's something small compared to the other instruction. But look at how weak we are. We want the miracles of Allah. We want solution to our problems, but we are not prepared to dress appropriately. Just appropriately. That's all. What Allah has instructed. Allah says you dress, you cover this and you cover that. And this is how it should be. We're not prepared, but we want the miracles in our life. Just like Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Where is the logic? If you want a miracle, Allah says, okay, I've given you simple instructions. Follow them. Let's see your dedication. We will give you the miracle so much so that when the miracle doesn't come, we will make you so happy and content that you will be convinced that whatever Allah has done is better for me. Sometimes we are asking a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, give me this. Oh Allah, give me that. And we don't know it's bad for us. And we are crying for years on end. Oh Allah, I want this. I really want this. Ya Allah, give it to me. And we are good Muslimin. We follow the instruction of Allah. Trust me, if we are really good Muslimin, we understand that if Allah has kept something away from you as desperately as you may have wanted it, perhaps it was not good for you. That's something you need to know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. This is something we learn from Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam's story that he constantly obeyed the instruction of Allah, even though this particular instruction did not make sense to him. Not at all. He didn't doubt because of the source. Subhanallah. With us instructions that make sense to us, we know we see the light. We've been explained everything to by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Still, sometimes we find ourselves, you know, dilly dallying. May Allah forgive us. So a day of Eid is a day of reconciliation, a day to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a day to make peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, my bad ways, my bad habits, I'm cutting them out. And this is why the ulama, the fuqaha, the muhaddithin, so many of the scholars of Islam, they have spoken about the sacrifice. The Quran says, From the sacrifice, the meat is not going to get to Allah. The blood is not going to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What reaches Allah, the piety out of it, the consciousness of Allah that you achieved through it today, Let's take a look. You have a cow and everyone says, wow, that's beautiful. I paid so much per kilo. Do you know that you have an animal? You see the big goats, mashallah, or the sheep, and you're so excited. 
Subhanallah, and people say, look at that goat, we're going to enjoy the meat. Don't stop there. The enjoyment is part of the, the celebration. But the point is not the meat and the point is not the blood. It is, did you slice out or sacrifice or cut out your bad habits as you were sacrificing that animal to say, Oh Allah, your instruction to Ibrahim alayhi salam, I am fulfilling today. So all your other instructions to me, I need to fulfill even before this. Subhanallah, amazing. It's something logical, simple, straightforward. So you turn to Allah. What you and I should be achieving when we witness the sacrifice in the next few days is closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, Oh Allah, this animal has been, the life of it has been taken in the most humane way and we will eat, we will enjoy. But the lesson from it, oh Allah, forgive me, my sins, my ways, my habits, my weaknesses, oh Allah, strengthen me, make me strong. And don't think you're a strong person without calling out to Allah. No matter how powerful you think you are, no matter how intelligent you think you are, make dua to Allah, ask Allah, oh Allah, help me. No matter how wealthy, no matter whatever you have in life, continue to ask Allah. It is only through the mercy of Allah, only through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have achieved what you have and you will continue to have it and you will achieve in the future as well. So a person who has good health, for example, they cannot think to themselves, I've got good health, so I don't need to make dua to Allah to say, oh Allah, give me good health. No way. If Allah wants, he can take it away now. He can take it away here. It has happened to other people. So you say, oh Allah, I thank you for what you have given me. And I ask you not to take it away from me. And I ask you increase in it. Subhanallah. That's a threefold dua. Thank Allah for what you have. Ask him not to take it away and ask him to give you more. This is indeed something noble, subhanallah. And when you are tested, you need to tell yourself there were people better than me who were tested with bigger tests than this. And this is the reason why look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa study his life. You will find that he has been tested in a bigger way than any one of us could ever have been tested. Subhanallah, this is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my beloved brothers and sisters, here is the sunnah of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. I've presented to you the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the doors for Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Primary reason is he followed the instruction of Allah, even the instructions that did not make sense to him. The fact that he knew it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he immediately surrendered to it. The lesson I learned and I would like to share with you is in my life, no matter what, when an instruction comes from Allah, I need to make an effort to fulfill it as Allah wants it. I need to make an effort to understand that Allah has blessed me. He's tested me with easy, easy tests compared to the rest or compared to others. May Allah make it easy for us all. Similarly, when it comes to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, from his offspring, you find Allah has chosen that all the prophets to follow were from his family. All of them. Subhanallah. They were from his family. Just like Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he called out to his people for 950 years and he lived in their midst for even longer. What did Allah give him as a gift? Do you want to hear? Allah says in the Quran, Allahu Akbar. We ensured that his family were the only family that actually continued in terms of giving birth. The rest of them who were with him on the ark, no one gave birth. Did you ever know this? That Nuh alayhi salatu was salam is a common father for all of us. Before or closer than Adam alayhi salam. If someone says I'm related to you, they're not telling you a lie. They are related because we are all born from parents and the root goes back to Adam alayhi salam. But there is a closer relation than that. What is it? Nuh alayhi salam. He's a common forefather of all of us. Allah says as a gift to Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. The rest of the people who came after were only from his family. The others, they passed away. They did not have children. Subhanallah, this is a gift. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam as well. It's amazing how he was given the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the messengers to follow from his family, including Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam through the lineage of Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. Similarly, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam made du'as. 
at a certain point, every single dua he made was given to him. He made dua for Makkah. Oh Allah, make the people's hearts want to come there. Who from amongst us wouldn't like to go today to Makkah? Subhanallah. He says, Oh Allah, give them fruit, give them vegetable. Obviously, that place is desert. But go and see what fruit is there. That's the dua. Allah's miracle up to today. It's amazing. Let us understand when you show dedication to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you. He will bestow upon you. He will definitely give you. He will open the doors for you. The difficulty is we hear a powerful talk or we hear a decent reminder and we start saying, okay, I'm turning to Allah. So today we read five salah. Tomorrow morning we get up for Fajr and after Salatul Fajr, we come and say, look, I've called out to Allah, but he still hasn't given me. Subhanallah, you become impatient. This is what happens to man. You dedicate yourself for two weeks and after two weeks, everything is gone. That's not how it is. It is a dedication of a lifetime until you die on that condition. My prayer, my sacrifice, whatever I've done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my life, my death is all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. It is a lesson that we learn from the life of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. I just want to end by saying my brothers and sisters think for a minute the tests we have in our lives are nothing compared to what came to Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Let us try our best to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by changing ourselves in a way that we get closer to Allah. Adjust your life so that it suits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's never ever make changes to our lives that distance us.